Hello everybody, it's time to go to work on some block planes. I dug a few off the pile and figured it's been a while since I've done some block planes, but I've got a couple that I've never worked on before. And they are the S18s. I've had the, all of the other steel planes, but I've never had the S18. So here it is. Book value of these is $90 to $240. Let's break them down. So there they are, all broken down. It's a pretty neat plane. It's got a unique uh, throat adjustment method using those two plates right there on the top of the bed instead of being below like all the other block planes. And then this one, somebody made a little hole in the side of the body right there. So I might just tack weld that shut to see what it looks like. So here's what the mouthpieces and the bases look like after they've been in deep sink. Nice hot water, a little bit of simple green and a toothbrush, scrub them down. And it shows me that the paint, because I don't believe they use Japaning on these, it, it's pretty much shot, gone, so they're going to go into my uh, sandblaster and prep them for a new finish. But first, I almost forgot to mention that I knocked the pins out that release the depth adjusters. There they are. Been removed. Makes it a lot easier to do the cleanup and the finishing. And here's what the parts look like after they've been out of the sandblaster. I uh, lightly lapped the bottom and sides of the bases. The laterals are, are all cleaned up, looking really good. The insides of the base are prepped and ready for paint. The laterals went into the sandblaster. Then they went on the wire wheel and the buffer. And that's how they got to looking like they do now. The next thing I want to do is see if I can have any luck and fill that hole right there. And I'm ready to fill the hole. Okay, let's do a little lapping and see how it looks. And there it is. The weld's done. I lapped it. It didn't turn out as good as I hoped it would, but it looks a whole lot better than having a hole through the side. Just a little imperfection. Looks like a rust pit. I can live with that. Next step is to tape them off and put a finish on them. I've taped off the parts that need to be refinished with my own version of Japaning. Attention to detail makes a difference. You don't want paint going where paint's not supposed to go. It's easier to prevent it than to remove it. I always make sure that all the little holes that are threaded get plugged by taking some shop paper towel and pushing them down in there. But that's it. Then they're ready to, ready to spray. I've put the bottoms and the mouthpieces into my uh, OSHA approved paint booth and I'm ready to put a finish on. There they are with the first coat applied. They're looking good. And my OSHA approved ventilation high speed drying system, it's over there running. The next thing I want to do is clean up the caps. Had quite a few people asking me how I do my lever caps. This is uh, pretty much the same procedure. It's interesting on these to notice that the right hand side is where most of your uh, nickel plating loss is. It's obvious the nickel plating on these is, is gone on at least half of the caps. So what I do is I put them in my bead blaster and clean them up. But first we got to take a look at the back side. It's not at all uncommon to see these things just filled up with rust. And that's pretty much what both of these are. So the third and final coat of paint is applied. And the caps have come out of the uh, sandblaster. They were sanded with the rubber sanding block and then followed up with a sponge sander. And then they were taken on the wire wheel. And I'm um, moving on to the next step. They're not done yet. And it's back to my O'Shucks approved paint booth ready to put on the, the final coat of the finish. 
light spray over all the black painted parts and it's going to look really good. So the finished parts are piling up. The caps are uh, done. They've been blasted. I showed you how I sanded them. Then they went over on my buffer, buffed them on the wheel, and they turned out looking really nice. Three coats of paint and then my final coat, you all saw what that was, applied to those parts there. On the underside of the cap, I knocked both those pins out, you can see it, I left them hanging like that. Makes it easier to clean them. And the next thing I'm going to do is wipe these uh, painted parts down with my dirty oil rag. And there's a look at the dirty oil rag. And I'm not going to tell you what kind of oil that I use in it. So let's get to it. So the dirty oil has been on overnight. Had to take a break for supper of course. And it will be time to wipe it off pretty soon. But I got to take care of these two irons. And all the small parts before this project is ready to reassemble. The first thing I like to do is scrape them to get the bulk of the crud off. When you're scraping, make sure you got a fresh burr on the edge. Keep your scraper at an angle like this to your work. You're less likely to gouge the, uh, the metal. That's, you get the idea, that's the scraping. And to give you a true before and after contrast of scraped versus just the raw rusted side, this is scraped by itself. And the next thing I'm going to do to show you what you can do is you take an old uh, sanding sponge and you're going to sand it with that sponge and the sponge is going to give you a more even patina if you're going for the old look. And then I move on to some 3 or 4 aught steel wool. Same thing. Taking it down even more on evening out the patina. And now, now you've got this appearance. And that's, that's an acceptable iron right there. And that didn't involve but a couple minutes worth of work. And if you want to go one step further, this sand and block has got 3,000 grit paper on it. And I do that in a swirl. And that's, that's how it looks when you go that far. But those two planes I'm working on are looking like new, so it wouldn't be right to have old irons, old appearing irons on, on a new looking plane. So both sides of the iron have been scraped, front and back. And the uh, grooves on the back side, I'm going to go over to my wire wheel and clean them out. After I clean the grooves out, I take another sanding block. I use 150 grit paper and I'm cleaning up the, the rounded edge right here. So with both of the top edges done, then it's on to my lapping station to do the, the flat edges. It only takes a few passes back and forth, holding it at a 90 degree. Take a look at it so you got a little more on, on the front and back to do. So just add some pressure to the front and back. Get it up onto that curve just a little bit. Alright, that's it. So I've got both irons done. The edges are, are cleaned up. For just general all around lapping, I like to use 150 grit paper. Next thing I want to do is clean up the slot. For cleaning the slot, I take a quarter sheet of 150 grit paper, roll it up into a tight little tube, and just work it all around. With both the slots done, I move on to lapping the flat surfaces. Same 150 grit paper and uh, do that on both sides until you've got it cleaned up to as clean as what you want it to be. When you got an iron that looks really good, which the one on the right is probably qualified to say that, and one that has some pitting and staining, the finishing technique, I, the one 150 paper is with the grain on the right, and the one on the left I finish with swirls until the swirls are even all over. I'm going back to the 3000 grit paper to finish it. So I'm going to keep doing this and then show, show you what it looks like on this one. And on the one that's straight, 
it's the same technique except because I, I went straight I'm going to keep it straight and it ends up being a shinier newer looking iron when you do it this way and there's a look at the finished product using both techniques uh, straight on the right and swirl on the left gives you an idea what you're going to get so just like Noah's Ark 2x2 two two, there's all the parts of the S18 all lined up ready to get on board there's a quick look at the edges of the iron there's a look at the back side of them and this pair of beautiful planes is ready to be put back together and there they are a couple beautiful planes almost a hundred years old and looking fine let's get a look at the other side quick look at the machine surfaces and and there's a look at the bases. You can you can adjust the throat on these things till it closes completely. So let's give these things a test drive. For this test drive, I'm using one inch walnut. And it's not having a problem with the walnut. I'll give it a passing grade. And now I've switched over to the second number S18. I closed the throat up in the, on this one a little bit. Seems to do a better job. The shaving is starting to pile up on the floor. That's what I like to see. test drive is done they pass the test they produce lots of nice fine shavings uh, throat adjustment seems to make a difference and uh, doesn't take a whole lot of adjusting on these are simple to do so these two beautiful S18s are going to go on eBay during the month of June should be listing them in the first week if you're interested in buying them and speaking of June that's when the drawing is for the free Stanley number no. three if you haven't made a comment on that video, go to my Stanley number no. 3 video and make the comment, I want to win, and you'll be in the drawing first week of June is when I plan on doing that. I'll post a video to show who the winner is. Hope you enjoyed and learned something about these S18s. I think it's on to it's about four or five number 140 block planes that I'm going to do next. Time for supper. Bye.